Ladies and gentlemen, we interrupt your regularly scheduled programming with an urgent and mind-boggling revelation. It appears that Shadow Priests are back at it again. You might recall our previous reports where they were caught utilizing their mind-controlling powers to influence endless reworks to their class design. But hold on to your tinfoil hats, folks, because our trusted sources have uncovered an even more astonishing development. Now, it appears Shadow Priests are using their mind-altering abilities to infiltrate the very fabric of group dynamics and secure invites to Mythic Plus dungeons. But fear not, we here at Skillcapped have reached out to some of the best MDI experienced players in the world, including those from both Echo and Method. All with the aim to shatter the illusion that Shadow Priests are the only viable ranged DPS out there right now. In order to rank our ranged DPS, we will be doing so by taking each one and assigning a score out of 10 across three distinct metrics. The first of which being damage. This is mostly weighted towards good AoE damage. However, we will also take into account both single target damage and priority damage as these are equally significant factors in determining overall damage output. The second metric is survivability. This aspect holds significant importance, particularly in Season 2 where certain mechanics and bosses can inflict very sustained high damage. Therefore, specs that are naturally durable and well-kitted to handle such mechanics are valued very highly. Lastly, we have the third metric, Utility. This is quite comprehensive and includes several factors. Mob control, which comprises of crowd control, slows, interrupts, and general AoE crowd control options available to the spec, and general party-wide utility, encompassing beneficial buffs, cooldowns, off-healing capabilities, battle reses, dispels, and any other elements that contribute to enhancing the specialization's overall usefulness inside of dungeons. Coming to absolutely no surprise to anybody, our first and highest ranked ranged DPS is of course, Shadow Priest. In terms of damage, Shadow Priest is the gold standard of what a M plus DPS should bring to the table. For standard AoE, Shadow Priest is up there with the best of them, with the majority of their damaging coming from their two key damage over time effects, which can be applied with ease thanks to Shadow Crash, allowing you to get them active immediately and consistently thanks to its very short cooldown. What truly solidifies Shadow Priest's dominance is that despite delivering some of the highest AoE damage possible, they achieve this primarily through their standard single target rotation. This is made possible by Psychic Link, which spreads the damage from their single target damage to any targets they have Empiric Touch on. So not only are they competing for the top spot on single target, but they're also incredibly adept at doing priority damage inside of pulls as they can choose whichever target they want to focus. Furthermore, Shadow Priest compared to other specs isn't heavily reliant on the need for cooldowns or specific pulling patterns to cater to their need. That being said, on June 28th, we did end up seeing some class balancing implemented to specifically tone down Shadow's AoE damage. Despite those targeted changes, the overall effect of the nerf was relatively small, resulting in only around a slight 3 3% reduction to Shadow's overall damage in keys. So even after the nerfs, they continue to be one of the best ranged DPSs out there, so we'll be rewarding them a 9 out of 10 score for damage. Moving on to survivability, Shadow Priest proves to be equally adept. It boasts a wide array of defensive cooldowns, each varying in strength. Dispersion serves as a perfect tool for handling any level of incoming damage. Desperate Prayer offers a valuable buffer, enabling you to avoid one-shot mechanics or providing an additional bit of health for your healer or tank to save you. Notably, when combined with the Angel's Mercy talent, Desperate Prayer's cooldown can be remarkably short, making it particularly effective in certain encounters such as the third boss in Halls of Infusion. The safety net of Angelic Bulwark and even just Power Word shields here and there also act as a great buffer to either help survive or deal with incoming damage. Then of course, they've also got both Protective Light, which can be easily maintained, as well as the damage reduction provided by Fade thanks to Translucent Image, which has next to no cooldown, both offering further damage reduction. The only true weakness of Shadow is that they can sometimes struggle into purely physical based damage and lack no complete immunity, so we'll be rewarding them another high score of 9 out of 10. When it comes to utility, Shadow Priest certainly does not disappoint, boasting various different utility tools such as Power Infusion, which depending on who you ask, may not even belong to the Shadow Priest themselves. You got Mass Dispel, which depending on the dungeon and what fixes are active that week, can be crucial for the success of the key, making it single-handedly one of the best utility spells in the game. Then the ability to purge and also remove diseases can again be important in dungeons like Brackenhide or when dealing with the afflicted affix. Also, you can't mention Priest Utility without covering Mind Soothe, which has proven to be an integral tool for a lot of common dungeon routes. Power Word Fortitude holds immense value as you progress into higher level keys, while the additional off-healing provided by Vampiric Embrace and occasional shields cannot be neglected either. 
Mob control is where Shadow Priest slightly lacks though, only really having Psychic Scream, which even then though is still very strong as an AoE stop. The weak point is their interrupt though, as Silence has a much longer cooldown than some of the other ranged interrupts. Bearing that in mind, we're going to be giving Shadow Priest another 9 out of 10, primarily attributed to just how strong both Mass Dispel and Power Infusion can be. With an impressive total score of 27 out of 30, Shadow Priests truly stand out as a force to be reckoned with, excelling across all three metrics. The strength of Shadow Priest lies in their straightforward playstyle, allowing them to consistently deliver high overall damage without heavy reliance on cooldowns or specific pulling strategies. This versatility makes them a formidable choice for any level of Mythic Plus content. While Shadow Priests do face certain limitations, such as a lack of mobility, their weaknesses are relatively minor. But as key levels increase, players will need to meet higher expectations in terms of correctly utilizing their utility, survivability tools, and fulfilling specific spec requirements. Overall, Shadow Priests have proven themselves to be a dominant and sought after specialization, being the strongest and most represented ranged spec right now. Balanced Druids are our second highest performing ranged DPS. I mean, really? Did you expect anything less? Damage wise, Balanced Druids looked like they might struggle this season after losing their Giga Strong Season 1 tier set. However, Balance has surprised everybody with some of the highest sustained AoE DPS possible, primarily coming, of course, from their Moonfire and Sunfire coupled with Starfall, which can be incredibly beneficial, especially in higher keys when mobs start to live a little bit longer. On single target, they're equally as well kitted, with very high single target damage if played well, even beating out Shadow Priests on bosses. However, their only real weak point is when it comes to AoE priority damage and their decline in strength on 2-3 to three target cleave. These limitations can come into play on certain boss encounters. Nevertheless, Balanced Druids remain unmatched in terms of the overall damage they can dish out across the majority of dungeons, only truly rivaled by Shadow Priests. Considering their overall performance, we will award them a score of 9 out of 10. Survivability wise, druids stand out as one of the most resilient ranged specializations. They possess several tools to enhance their survivability, such as the relatively short cooldown of bark skin and renewal to mitigate or heal through incoming damage. However, the bulk of their survivability, especially in higher end keys, relies on the use of bear form, whereby shifting inside prior to mechanics can allow them to survive due to their increased health and durability. The trade off, however, is of course you'll be losing a ton of potential damage output, which can occasionally present some challenges. As a whole, though, Though, balanced Druids will be getting an 8 out of 10 for survivability. When it comes to utility, Balanced Druids surpass the competition, possessing the most extensive toolkit among ranged DPS specializations. In terms of mob control, they are unrivaled, offering multiple AoE crowd control options such as Incapacitating Roar, Typhoon, and Solar Beam. Balanced Druids also bring a plethora of party utility. Abilities like Stampeding Roar, Soothe, Nature's Vigil, Innervate, and the Battle Res provided by Rebirth, all of which can be valuable additions to any group composition. Additionally, they possess both a Poison and a Decurse removal ability, which can prove highly useful in specific dungeons. One of the most significant aspects of their utility kit is the party-wide buff provided by Mark of the Wild. This buff is arguably the best raid buff in Mythic Plus content, as it offers both damage and damage reduction for the entire party. Considering the extensive range of utility tools available to Balanced Druids, we will reward them a well-deserved score of 10 out of 10 for utility. They bring an array of crowd control, party support, and valuable buffs that greatly contribute to the success of any group in Mythic Plus Dungeons. With an impressive score of 27 out of 30, Balanced Druids emerge as strong contenders for the top spot alongside Shadow Priests. Similar to Shadow Priests, Balanced Druids are relatively easy to pick up and perform well on, making them an excellent choice for ranged players looking to venture into Mythic Plus content. But in order to excel, you're going to need a vast knowledge of the spec itself, as in order to min-max, there's a ton of different variables you're going to have to master for playing around Arcanic Pulsar and Incarnation, as well as mastering how and when to best use your extensive utility kit. The next range DPS spiraling towards the top of our tier list is the Devastation Evoker. Devastation Evokers have seen a surge in popularity this season thanks in large part to the power of their tier set, where the set bonus alone can contribute to over 10% of their total damage output. With their straightforward rotation and powerful effects of their mastery, Devastation Evokers have become known for their exceptional single target and AoE damage. In fact, their upfront burst damage is arguably the highest in the game, especially in lower level keys where such a damage profile can be incredibly valuable. Of course, there is one catch, you need to stay alive. When it comes to playstyle, the Devastation Evoker's strength lies in their ability to capitalize on short cooldowns like Fire Breath, Eternity Surge, and Deep Breath for the bulk of their damage. However, it's worth noting that they may lack specific AoE priority damage, but when you're dealing with such immense damage to everything around you, it hardly seems to matter. So overall, we'll be rewarding them a very high 9 out of 10. 
As far as survivability is concerned, Devastation Evoker does very well, which may come as a surprise to most people. The combination of having male armor combined with two charges of their damage reduction obsidian scales makes handling most mechanics easily doable. Then in addition, having the extra self-sustain from abilities like Renewing Blaze, Rescue, and even Emerald Blossom adds that extra bit of survivability, making them quite durable as a whole. So we'll be giving a score of 8. When it comes to utility, Devastation can compete with the best, possessing powerful AoE stops in the form of their racial skills, Wing Buffet, and Tail Swipe. Additionally, they bring abundant party utility that greatly benefits the team. For example, their ability Zephyr provides a 20% damage reduction against area of effect attacks, proving invaluable against certain bosses. The Devastation Evokers also offer valuable support in the form of dispelling poisons with Expunge and removing bleed, curse, and disease effects through Cauterizing Flame. These abilities make it much easier to handle bosses like Chargath and Neltheris, who inflict physical debuffs. Let's not forget the added benefit of off-healing provided by skills such as Rescue, Verdant Embrace, and Emerald Blossom. Moreover, Devastation Evokers possess niche utility with skills like Oppressing Roar, combined with the overall talent. These can provide huge value, especially during Raging Weeks, where enraging effects can be removed with a single press. Furthermore, Fury of the Aspects, of course, grants the highly sought-after Bloodlust effect, making them a particularly desirable caster. Considering these factors, it seems fitting to award Devastation Evoker a solid rating of 9 out of 10 for their overall utility. With a total score of 26, Devastation is great for those that enjoy dealing high upfront burst damage, all while still being able to assist your party in a multitude of ways. The only real weaknesses of Devastation are their low range, inherent aggro issues, coupled with the fact that they can often be quite cooldown reliant, meaning if tanks are not generating adequate threat as well as pulling around you, you are at risk of losing a ton of damage. And as with a lot of specs out there, with great power comes great responsibility, as you have an abundance of situational utility, as well as defensive cooldowns that all need to be proactively used, it's going to involve a certain level of dungeon knowledge to meet demands, especially when pushing those higher keys. The last hybrid class we will discuss on this list is the Elemental Shaman. Unfortunately, Elemental Shamans, while still strong, have become somewhat of a rarity compared to their melee counterpart. In terms of damage, Elemental primarily excels at AoE damage, having very high upfront damage from abilities like Stormkeeper coupled with the passive effects of Lightning Rod. Alongside the sustained AoE pressure from both Liquid Magma, Totem, and Storm Elemental for those more challenging packs. But this can in turn make them very cooldown reliant, as their damage from just Chain Lightnings and Earthquakes alone isn't as strong as some of the other specs. Where Elemental falls behind some of the higher specs on this list is when it comes to both priority and single target damage where they're slightly lacking. So because of this, we will be giving them a respectable score of 8 out of 10. The weak point of Elemental, and with all Shaman specs as a whole, is their survivability. Outside of Astral Shift, Nature's Guardian, and the extra health gained from Earth Elemental, you have no real way of mitigating damage, especially high sustained damage. And as we all know, survivability has become a huge factor this season, with healing requirements being at an all-time high. This makes Elemental as a spec far less desirable the higher you climb in key levels, so we'll be giving a rather low score of 5 out of 10. Where Elemental Shamans truly excel is utility. They possess unparalleled mob control abilities, including a ranged kick with a short cooldown, a knockup effect from Thunderstorm, an AoE stun from Capacitor Totem, slows from Earthbind Totem, and the valuable RNG stuns from Earthquake. In terms of group-wide utility, Shamans are equally equipped with abilities such as Poison Cleansing Totem, which remains incredibly useful this season. Ancestral Guidance to aid with specific healer checks, Stone Skin Totem for mitigating physical damage, and Wind Rush Totem for swift maneuvering around dungeons or dealing with certain boss mechanics. Additionally, having access to both Bloodlust and Purge greatly enhances the value they bring to any group. While Elemental Shamans reign supreme in mob control among the ranged classes, they fall slightly behind Balanced Druids in overall utility, consequently we'll give them a solid score of 9. Tallying up the scores, this gives Elemental Shaman a total of 22 out of 30, having a heavy focus on AoE damage as well as providing any group with strong utility options. With their primary weaknesses being their lack of priority damage and inherently weak survivability, but this is only really an issue if you're looking to push into that upper echelon of key levels. Nonetheless, when it comes to general keys, Elemental Shamans prove to be one of the best carry specs. As our last three classes are Mage, Warlock, and Hunter, we'll primarily focus on the most dominant spec. That being said, we'll still make sure to discuss the differences and award each spec their own scores. Starting with Mage, the clear standout here is of course Fire. Fire Mage has a very clear niche on the damage front, and that's their incredibly powerful AoE damage priority. How their damage profile works is that their single target and AoE are virtually identical, and the majority of your AoE damage comes from hitting one target and then cleaving with Ignite from them. 
This makes them incredibly adept for dealing with certain pulls that have a high health or high priority target, but depending on how you look at it, this strength can also be one of their major weaknesses. As some large AoE pulls, or even in lower level keys, there may not be a high health mob that remains alive long enough for you to really make the most out of your damage, but even then, a well played fire mage can easily top overall damage in dungeons. For this reason, we'll be giving them an 8 out of 10. In comparison to the other mage specs, Arcane is the next closest contender on the damage front, again having a very similar profile, looking to focus on one target and then cleaving around it for their AoE damage. In fact, the damage during cooldowns far exceeds that of fire, as Arcane has arguably some of the highest burst imaginable. The problem is though that it's not only way more cooldown reliant, but these cooldowns have lower uptime and longer cooldown durations. Therefore, while Arcane excels in reaching impressive highs in terms of damage, it also experiences considerable lows during periods when cooldowns are not active, so we'll be giving them a slightly lower 7 out of 10. In contrast, Frost Mage stands out as the more user-friendly option among the three mage specs. It is less reliant on optimal pulls and precise cooldown usage to perform well, making it a more consistent choice. This can, however, prove beneficial in lower level dungeons or for novice players. However, despite its ease of play, Frost's overall damage output is generally considered underwhelming, so rewarding anything more than 6 would be a crime. Moving on, as a whole, mages exhibit a rather high level survivability, compensating for their limited passive survivability with powerful defensive cooldowns to rotate through. All mage specializations have access to mirror images, ice block, alter time, greater invisibility, and their respective barriers. These defensive tools, coupled with shifting power to get them back, enables mages to effectively manage any level of boss fight. However, it is worth noting that mages may struggle against sustained high damage due to the absence of passive damage reduction, which is their main weakness right now. Out of the three, the only noticeable difference is that Fire and Frost gain some additional survivability. Fire gains a cheat death from Cauterize, whereas Frost gets a second ice block from Cold Snap, which can arguably be valued equally. Overall, we'll be giving Fire and Frost an 8, and Arcane a 7 out of 10 for survivability. Last up, we've got Utility. Again, this is fairly equal across the board, with all three specs having access to multiple high-valued AoE stops in the form of Dragon's Breath and Blast Wave, as well as Counterspell paired up with the talent Quick-Witted for a decently short cooldown single target interrupt. Party utility-wise, all mage specs of course have access to both Arcane Intellect as well as Time Warp for that must-have Bloodlust effect, a decurse which has only a few uses this season. You also can't undervalue how important having more powerful food can be, especially for your healer. As a whole though, utility definitely isn't a mage's strong point. As such, we'll be rewarding a 6 for both Arcane and Fire, while Frost with their additional slows will be receiving a 7. Taking a look at the compiled mage scores, Fire scores the highest with a respectable 22, gaining the highest points in both damage and survivability among the three specs, with its main strengths being that abundance of priority damage in AoE situations. Although they're still reliant on combustion, talents like Kindling and Sun King's Blessing makes it far less punishing. Frost is a close runner-up with a total of 21, losing a few points on the damage front where they're severely lacking, but like we mentioned, it's far easier for newer players or mages looking to pug keys as you're less dependent on correct pull timings. Where Frost excels between the specs is on the utility front, where the consistent slows and control over mobs can often provide considerable value. Arcane is the lowest scoring of the three specs, scoring one point under Frost and two under Fire, having a total of 20 across all three metrics. Despite its very high damage during cooldowns, it's just not a spec that can really thrive in Mythic Plus, not only due to how reliant you are on your group to play around your cooldowns, but also due to its passive damage output being comparatively low. So all in all, while Frost may have its niches, Arcane is just a worse version of Fire for dungeons right now. Next up, we've got Warlock. Again, in the same way as we just did with Mages, we'll cover all three specs and give them their individual rankings across each metric. Undoubtedly, the strongest among the Warlock specs is Destruction. This specialization thrives in various damage aspects, firstly when it comes to large-scale pulls. Destruction excels due to the high sustained damage provided by Reign of Fire and Immolate coupled with Infernals, resulting in impressive overall damage output even without the reliance on offensive cooldowns. Destruction also shines in single target encounters, and particularly excels in two target cleave situations, where Havoc can make the spec unrivaled on certain pulls and bosses. However, it is worth noting that Destruction's overall damage performance declines significantly on 3 to 8 targets, which unfortunately comprises a considerable portion of most pulls, and for this reason we'll be giving them a 7 out of 10. 
Demonology falls slightly behind on overall damage, but arguably has a far more desirable niche, and that's for its insane single target damage during Demonic Tyrant. This alone can make the spec excel, especially on tyrannical weeks, where they can absolutely destroy bosses with clever manipulation of wild imps. That being said though, although it's by no means competing for the top spot, Demonology's overall AoE damage is still relatively strong thanks to the damage of your dogs, implosion, and Felguard's bladestorm. So, we think a score of 6 out of 10 is fair. Coming as no surprise to anybody, the weakest of the three specs in terms of damage is Affliction. Affliction just has so many issues now, it's difficult to even know where to start. You can either opt to focus on single target or AoE damage with your spec and struggle to do both, but even then the numbers are so low right now that it doesn't even matter as you'll be bottom of the barrel in both. Hopefully we see some big improvements in the next patch, as for now Affliction will get our lowest damage score of 3. Our next metric is survivability, and this is where all three specs of Warlock excel, being arguably the most passively durable out of all the ranged DPS right now. Not only do they boast the largest overall health pool, but also get a consistent absorb provided by Soul Leech and the damage reduction of Soul Link. These alone basically cover the majority of incoming sustained damage. But then, for uncertain bosses or pulls, if this proves to not be enough, then you even got potent defensive cooldowns, namely Dark Pact, which for just a 45 second cooldown, allows you to survive practically all mechanics. In addition to all the standard defensives, you've then even got Health Stone, Mortal Coil, or Unending Resolve to rotate through. Undoubtedly, both Destruction and Demonology both score 9 out of 10 here, but Affliction, due to its requirement on Grimoire of Sacrifice, will drop down to an 8. Moving to Utility, all three Warlock specs provide a ton of value to any group, both through their extensive mob control via abilities like Shadow Fury for that AoE interrupt, as well as Curse of Tongues, Mortal Coil, or even potentially Fear Spam, which can all be used to prevent important casts going through. Party utility-wise, Warlocks also bring a lot to the table, with Health Stone, which will always provide value, the ability to battle res with Soul Stone, furthermore, Gateway proves useful in specific encounters such as Watcher Iridius in Halls of Infusion, or for skipping packs like the Bridge and Freehold, for instance. Utility does, however, differ slightly between the specs. Destruction stands out with the added benefit of a stun from its Summon Infernal ability, along with the reliable, non-diminishing return stuns from Blasphemy. On the other hand, Demonology Specialization's Interrupt is perceived as slightly less valuable due to its accompanying stun effect. Surprisingly, this can often be more of a hindrance than a benefit. Whereas Affliction's Interrupt is a lot more reliable due to not being attached to your pet, which can be seen as a positive. For this reason, we'll be giving Destruction the highest utility score of 8, Affliction a 7, and Demonology a 6. Tallying up the scores, Destruction reigns supreme with a total of 24, excelling in large AoE scenarios and two target cleave, all while also not being too heavily reliant on cooldowns. Furthermore, its innate durability adds to its appeal, positioning Destruction as one of the most beginner-friendly specs to delve into for Mythic Plus, with its only real weakness being a lack of mobility and heavy requirement on casting for single target situations. Demonology gets a total score of 21. Overall, its damage is just far too nuanced for the average player. Not only is it far too heavily focused around single target for the majority of low-level dungeon groups, but also in order to compete requires extensive spec and dungeon knowledge due to the mechanics and exploits behind Demonic Tyrant. Sadly, Affliction falls behind the other Warlock specs with a relatively low score of 18. Its primary and major drawback stems from its underwhelming damage output. While Affliction does offer commendable utility and survivability options, damage ultimately carries the majority of value a spec brings in Mythic Plus, and Affliction really doesn't have any redeemable qualities right now. And with Warlock wrapped up, that brings us to our final range class of Hunter. Bear in mind, we'll be covering survival inside of our melee tier list, so be on the lookout for that. Starting off with Beast Mastery Damage, the spec currently resides in the lower to middle range of performance this season. It excels in high sustained single target damage, with a particular niche in dungeons with a large number of targets thanks to its uncapped AoE potential. This makes it exceptionally strong in dungeons like Freehold and Brackenhide. However, Beast Mastery falls considerably short when it comes to pulling packs one at a time. That being said, the spec isn't without its advantages, such as its high uptime on Bestial Wrath, which ensures a steady stream of damage so you won't see those low lows or high highs other specs have, making them very reliable. Also, it has to be mentioned that BM gains points for easy to play and pick up straightforward playstyle, coupled with its damage being unhindered by movement effects. Overall, for this reason, we'll be giving them a 6 out of 10. Marksmanship, on the other hand, is the polar opposite to Beast Mastery and brings an extremely burst-oriented damage profile, primarily revolving around a 2-minute window utilizing their strongest cooldown of True Shot, in addition to a mini burst window every 45 seconds with Volley, Salvo, and Death Chakram. 
Overall, especially now after the June 26 buffs to both aimed shot, kill shot, and rapid fire, marksmanship has slightly closed the gap between the other hunter specs on the damage front. Doing decently well in both single target and small scale AoE thanks to trick shots, but however, due to its target cap, can drastically fall off on more than six target pulls. That being said, its on demand burst damage and target swapping capabilities definitely provide some value. But as a whole, we think marksmanship, despite boasting different strengths, is around the same level as BM overall, so we'll be rewarding a 6 out of 10 for damage. While damage does carry the majority of the value that a DPS spec brings, you can't underestimate survivability, or in the case of Hunter, lack thereof. Both MM and BM are heavily lacking in this department, having almost non-existent passive survivability, meaning no self-healing and no passive mitigation. How they look to survive is primarily via their long cooldown defensives, aspect of the turtle and survival of the fittest. In addition to exhilaration and possibly even fortitude of the bear, depending on your pet, of which both are very minor. Especially though now in Season 2, Hunter's overall survivability kit is just nowhere near enough to combat the consistent onslaught from most bosses and require extensive focus healing and externalists to survive higher end keys. As a result, we'll be giving Beast Mastery a score of 5 out of 10 and Marksmanship, due to lacking the additional survivability from their pet, a 4 out of 10. It doesn't get any better on the utility side of things either, where Hunters are notorious for bringing, well, nothing. Their main standout utility is the Bloodlust effect provided by Primal Rage. However, this comes with certain limitations. Marksmanship Hunters need to dismiss their pet to benefit from the Lone Wolf talent, while Beast Mastery Hunters may have to resummon their Tenacity pet to benefit from Fortitude of the Bear. Aside from Bloodlust, Hunters have some niche utility options. Freezing Trap can be situationally useful for crowd control, especially on the last boss in Freehold. Trank Shot can come in handy for dispelling enrages or handling fixates. Binding Shot can provide value in certain situations, such as corner pulls or stopping retreating mobs, while the slow effect from Tar Trap is always a welcome addition. Both also have misdirection for assisting tanks in pulling or maintaining threat. However, since most of Beast Mastery's damage comes from their pet, misdirection is not as impactful, but they do bring an added stun from intimidation. Overall, both ranged hunter specs lack any real significant party-based utility, and their mob control options have their limitations. Considering these factors, a score of 4 out of 10 seems fair for both marksmanship and Beast Mastery hunters in terms of utility. Tallying the scores up, Beast Mastery receives a rather low score of 15. But remember, especially in lower keys, the lack of utility and survivability are not as important factors, and BM still remains to be competitive on overall damage while being one of the most consistent and easy to do well with specs out there right now. After considering the recent damage buffs, Marksmanship Hunter receives a slightly lower score of 14 out of 30. However, it should be noted that Marksmanship Hunter now boasts significantly higher burst damage on single target and small scale pulls, while also excelling at quickly swapping targets. Ultimately, the choice between Beast Mastery and Marksmanship Hunter depends on personal playstyle preferences. Both specs have their own strengths and weaknesses, offering distinct damage patterns with their survivability issues being for the most part a non-factor until you get into the highest level of keys. Before we conclude, we have one huge disclaimer and would like to emphasize that our rankings should not discourage anyone from playing a ranged DPS spec that they enjoy. The tier list provided is simply a benchmark for the performance of ranged DPS specs in higher end Mythic Plus keys. It is important to note that the rankings may not fully reflect a spec's performance in all scenarios. At lower end keys, the primary consideration is often the damage output of a spec, particularly without the need for coordinated pulls and precise cooldown management. Ultimately, the most important factor is finding a spec that aligns with your playstyle and brings enjoyment to your gameplay experience. If you enjoyed the video and would like to see more content in the future, don't forget to give it a like and drop a comment to let us know your thoughts. We appreciate your support and thanks for watching. See you soon.